Air pollution and St. Louis have a long history together. This is St. Louis in the late 1930s and 40s, before steps were taken to clean and monitor the air. St. Louis back then is similar to Beijing today. Many people need masks to breathe easier. Same in New Delhi, India. Across the globe, entire cities have air pollution issues. It's also an issue for many spaces, from job sites to daycare centers. Research done at this aerosol and air quality research lab at Washington University in St. Louis may one day help people identify when and where they are at risk. The team is developing low-cost, portable and wearable sensors that could be linked to an app on a smartphone or tablet. A user would be able to monitor the air they breathe as well as the air their children or loved ones are breathing wherever they go. A customized plan for a family or community group. So this tells you what you are being exposed to individually. I want to clip sensors so that you can immediately tell. We want to use the latest technology so your cell phone starts beeping and you get a reasonable uh, accurate estimation of what you're being exposed to. So some of our students are designing low, uh, low cost portable particle sensors which could be purchased for five to ten dollars. Similar particulate matter or PM sensors are on the market today. It's really taken off. China has deployed 150,000 of these such sensors already in different cities. India wants to do the same but not as good as what he hopes PM sensors will become through the research in his lab. They're developing next generation sensors to be far superior, even far out. NASA is working with us. They would like to put this on outer space. So when we have the mission to Mars, when we want to send individuals to inhabit Mars, we might need a station on the moon. Uh, this is the way that we would know that our uh, astronauts are safe and so forth. The research for low-cost PM sensors involves calibrations on existing sensors to figure out how to improve them for more effective readings. Eliminating the dependence on the particle size and particle composition. With their algorithm, researchers say the size and composition doesn't matter, giving more accurate readings and alerts. Because right now the sensor have dependence on particle size and composition. And although these sensors have been pre-calibrated before they were distributed to users, but still there are some limitations on them, uh, which they will they may predict a biased PM mass concentration. And this uh, is what we're trying to figure out, why this happens and how can we fix them. With what they've learned, they developed this large scale prototype to be miniaturized later. It's an optical sensor to test their algorithm. It has a beam expander to shrink the beam and then it has a uh, avalanche photo detector to pick the very quick and small signal created by a particle passing through the laser beam. In this way, we, according to the time of flight, we can calculate the particle size. Although the sensors are in development and they're partnering with NASA, Pratim Biswas has a vision for the future. You never know, some student might spin off a company that does this. For HEC, I'm Kathleen Berger.